Hi everyone, my name is Claire and I work in Falkirk Library. That's me with a blonde hair alongside librarian Tanya. I run a project called Care Words and may have met you whilst visiting over the past year. I'm a keen caravanner and I like to spend weekends away exploring new places. I also love photography and have used some of my photographs to create this video for you. Today I would like to take you on a virtual tour of some of the Scottish Highlands and then over to Orkney. I shall try and include some facts about the places we visited. Are you sitting comfortably? Well, let's go then! This is my husband Gary wrestling to attach the awning to our old caravan named Wee Abbey. We have a newer one now and she's called Bridie. We named her that because we bought her up in Forfar. This trip took place during the September weekend in 2013. We set up camp at Granny's Hill in Hame and Dornock on the east coast of Scotland. The name Dornock is derived from the Gaelic for pebbly place. In Dornock there is a 13th century cathedral, the old town jail and the bishop's palace. On the trip we also stopped at the towns of Tain and Galsby on the mainland and Stromness and Kirkwall in Orkney. Pictured a beautiful sea view and the weather had been dry. We really liked being at the coast close to the sea, listening to the waves lap in and feeling the sand beneath our feet. Also watching the colours change over the landscape as the sun rises high into the sky embracing the land and our warmth and towards the end of the day spectacular sunsets which turned the heavens scarlet and burnt orange. The beaches on this north east coast are outstanding. The beach at Galsby was dominated by these big boulders covered in green seaweed and there was remnants of old ship parts which had been taken by the sand. We saw seals basking in the sunshine and the sweeping bay in Tain was so gorgeous on that glorious afternoon when we took a stroll. One clear night we sat down on the beach and looked towards the skies. I have never in my life seen the Milky Way in so much detail. I lay back on the beach and felt as small as a speck of sand. I didn't manage to get a decent picture of my own, but it looked something like this. The towns were all so pretty. We saw all churches, quaint cottages, picturesque scenes and lots of floral displays. I even found a street called Hellhole Road, which I found quite amusing. My highlight was Dunrobin Glen in Galsby. We wandered along the woodland track through a green world of wonder. It was like a rainforest, water cascading down through the foliage. The trees twisted and bent to make tunnels. We passed over some bridges, crossed silver streams until we came to a stop at the end of the track and what a sight greeted us, these outstanding waterfalls. Our journey to Orkney started very early in the morning when it was still dark so we could get the early ferry across from John O'Groats. The drive took nearly two hours to reach from Dornock. So here we are at John O'Groats. It lies in the far northeast tip of Scotland and it's at 876 miles from Cornwall, 690 miles from London, 280 miles from our capital Edinburgh, 2,200 miles from the North Pole but only 6 miles from Orkney by ferry. There are wee signposts telling you the distances to other places too. It really is remote. We boarded the ferry and kept a close eye out for dolphins during the crossing. We did see one, but it was quite far away. The tides on approach to the island were very strong. After arriving in Orkney, the first thing we saw were the shipwrecked boats from World War II. It was the sinking of HMS Royal Oak in October 1939 with the loss of 833 lives that prompted Churchill to order the building of a series of causeways, now known as the Churchill Barriers. This was to block off the eastern approaches to the naval anchorage of Scapa Flow. 
We were most excited about visiting the Neolithic sites and first we headed to Scarabray. This Neolithic settlement of Scarabray lies near the dramatic white beach of the Bay of Scale. It's the best preserved group of prehistoric houses in Western Europe. It was uncovered by a storm in 1850. The site pres presents a remarkable picture of life around 5,000 years ago. It was amazing imagining our ancestors living here as a big family and community. You could see little rooms, kitchen and cooking areas. Next was another historic site, the Rings of Brogga. I personally love a good stone circle and do spend a lot of time seeking them out wherever I go. This spellbinding stone circle is the most iconic symbol of Orkney's prehistoric past. It is a site of ritual and ceremony and hauntingly beautiful. It is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is one of the most photographed attractions in Orkney, particularly at sunset. The ring was built around 2500 to 2000 BC and covers an area of almost 8,500 square metres. It is the largest stone circle in the British Isles. It sits within a natural amphitheatre of hills, and 27 of the original 60 stones still survive today. It was breathtaking. I included a picture of us standing next to the stones to give you an idea of the scale and size as they tower out of the ground. Next was the Italian chapel which consists of two Nissen huts transformed into a beautiful chapel by Italian prisoners of war who were captured in North Africa and transported to the island of Lamholm in Orkney. Following a request from the camp priest, it was agreed these two huts would be joined together to provide a chapel. One of the prisoners, Domenico Ciocetti, carried in his pocket a small prayer card given to him by his mother before he left home in Italy. It was the image on that card of the Madonna and the Child by Niccolò Barberino that he based his painting above the altar in the chapel. The chapel was beautiful and the paintings were captivating. There was lots of beautiful ironwork too. There was even a wee iron heart in the floor. I hope you enjoyed this little trip to Orkney and the Highlands. It really is a remarkable place and I hope to visit again in the future. So take care everyone. Lots of love from the CareWords team at Falkirk Library.